Uh, first of all, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. My name is Nia McAllister and I'm the Visitor Experience Manager at the Museum of the African Diaspora. And as we gather here this evening, um, it is essential to acknowledge the time that we're living in. MOAD stands in solidarity with Black Lives Matter as there are multiple pandemics killing us, including the ongoing systemic violence against Black people. We honor and mourn the senseless murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Tony McDade, and so many others who have lost their lives at the hands of police brutality and racial injustice, including those whose names we do not know. We also acknowledge and wish to res wish resilience upon Jacob Blake, who remarkably, in spite of being nearly killed by seven targeted police bullets, in an ongoing act of white supremacist terror exacted by the state, he has survived. And so it, this tonight is a space for us to recognize our grief, our anger, our exhaustion, and also to seek comfort and joy in each other's company. All are welcome in this space, and it is of the utmost importance that we center respect and continue to create spaces to amplify Black voices. Before we get into the logistics of tonight's event, I also want to acknowledge the spaces that we're occupying. Though we are gathering virtually, Many of us are settlers, immigrants, or descendants of those forcibly brought to this continent. Our institutions were founded upon exclusions and erasures of the indigenous peoples whose lands we are located on. It is with deep respect that Moad acknowledges that even in a virtual space, our people, our work, and our network servers are all on native lands. And we thank the indigenous people of the Bay Area and beyond who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. And with that, I'm so grateful, again, to find community and healing through art. So for those who are new to this space or joining us again, I ask that everyone throughout the event, please keep your microphones on mute, unless you are the person on the mic sharing. Um, however, because open mics are very participatory and we love giving each other affirmations, I do really encourage folks to use the chat feature. Please um, applaud each other, uh, shout out lines that that stand out to you, use the, the reactions as well. Um, because I think it is important that even though we can't um, verbally affirm each other's work, um, it's important that we support each other in that way. And so the structure of the event essentially is that the first um, portion will be um, half of our open mic lineup. Uh, and then I will introduce our feature for this evening, which we have Raymond Nat Turner joining us. And then we will close out after his feature with the remaining open mic readers. And so I will post the, the lineup at the beginning um, in the chat. Um, and then before each reader, I will introduce your name. Um, if you were on the original lineup, um, but for some reason joined late or didn't see your name, um, or I skip you for some reason, please message me directly and I'll make sure if you were on the original lineup that you get into the lineup. Um, and the other logistic is that all readers have four minutes. Please res be respectful of everyone's time and keep within that time. Um, if you do go beyond, I will have to cut you off, but it's, it's um, out of respect of making sure that everyone has a space to share. And with that, I also would like to thank Art Bridges for the generous support that we've received to help continue our dynamic programming here at MOAD. And so with that, I'm gonna post the lineup and invite Kai Adia to be our first person on the mic. Welcome, Kai. Hello, thank you for having me. I definitely appreciate your words of wisdom about uh, facilitating the space. So I'm gonna share just uh, two poems from my upcoming poetry volume. Uh, I'm again, I'm Kai, and I'm a writer from LA and I have some poems from this little <laughs> poetry volume called The Depths of Anima. So I'm gonna start with a poem called Pyrophetic. You don't know who you are until the heat turns on. When you are scorched by fire, withstand the heat. Observe, wait for it to bathe you. I've chanted in the fire. You can either turn to ash, consumed by the friction of fear, or open from your sleep by the swoon of smoke. No matter what, the fire will uncover your true form. The rising wisps can spell a possible future. I prayed to see light. 
a world's chaos can feel like a passage of fire. You must be the seed that needs to it to melt your resin of passivity and comfort. So that's one poem, and I hope it kind of resonates with us uh, during this, this difficult time period. And another poem I'm just going to read again that I've shared on the open mic uh, before is called Wake Up. I think it's relevant to now, and I dedicate it to all the Black lives that have been lost during this time and those who keep fighting for us. Wake up. When's the wake up call? Will it be a gunshot and the sound of the next body's fall? Pale hands on black keys pushing down, down, down until they bend and make sounds their ears love to hear. Whether it's black voices running melodic hymns or wheezing a haunting note, we wheeze until po spores pour forth from our last breath. When's the wake up call? The chemicals in our bodies are jostled by supremacy displays. These constant sacrifices call for constant debate. We get the shakes and tremors, afraid to make a misstep, take on a mistake. Shall we feel the knives and needles or numb ourselves with our favorite vice? Binge watching reruns at night just to breathe again. When's the wake up call? Will it be a gunshot and the sound of the next body's fall? Must we stay here and face it all? In the middle of stillness, someone is still killing us. Mask on, silence gone, don't stop, don't halt. The pavement knows our souls. Orange butterfly ring, wings float with us, tenderly sharing the other side's love. Keep on with your warbling note. Chanting into the megaphone, talk over the talking heads. Open mouths gaping like mad fish, saying anything to re-engineer the narrative to be remembered. Casting a mirage that improper behavior warrants our execution when we're just jogging, playing, relaxing in our own homes. The deep brown woman with the black poofy hair, her fist in the air, her voice echoes into the ether, sending out freedom vibrations that slip between eons, holding our wishes, moving ahead of us all to open a future. Thank you. And those are, again, from my upcoming poetry volume. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kai. Those were both wonderful. And I'm very excited to get to read more of your upcoming volume. Thank you. All right, next up to the mic, I would like to invite Zakia G.E.K. Park. Welcome, Zakia. Thank you, Nia. So good to be here. Hello to everyone. My first poem I'd like to read, um, it's entitled, Fires in Oakland. We always get screwed, and that's the drill. The West Oakland apartment fire was not on the news. When I heard about it, I got the blues. It touched my heart and ripped it apart. A tragic fire blazing in the night, causing unimaginable fright. Most were asleep, but began to weep. Fire burning, smoke filling eyes, closet, clogging throats, babies crying, children screaming, afraid, disoriented, confused. 100 Black people displaced because of a landlord's greed. Property owners, spectators, developers too, all conspiring against me and you. Does anybody care? Fire took the lives of people who live there. Multiple violations, building rundown, holes in walls, ceilings threatening to fall, water leaks causing mold, electrical wires exposed, pipes rusted, filled with lead. A drink of water could kill you dead. Rats, roaches, bed bugs running amok. But the landlord still wants his buck. 100 black people displaced, driven into the street. No shelter, no clothing, no water, no food. The ghost ship fire was all over the news. 
Are the deaths and displacement of Black people unimportant news? Elders, disabled people, families with children, those who survived are homeless now. For my second poem is entitled, Greeted by a Rainbow. I come from a place where greeting is paramount, a place where the moon appears full each night, a place where the darkness highlights zillions of stars that kiss the sky and brighten our path through thickness in the woods at the midnight hour, a place where the doors are never locked, even as you sleep, a place where dewdrops halt on the first note, the songbird sings, a place where porch swings sing a lullaby by passerby, a place where summer breezes soothe your sneezes, a place where neighbors talk and children walk to play in the early morning sun, greeted by a rainbow. I come from a place where sunlight, moonlight, and starlight is etched on the faces of the people and shown throughout the universe. I come from a place where pyramids are erected at the end folds of the cerebrum, cerebellum, and medulla. I come from a place where experiencing bitter, hot, sour and sweet are precursors to life's journey. I come from a place where greeting is a way of life. It begins and never ends. Thank you. Thank you, Zakia. Those were beautiful. Thank you. All right, next up we have Juby Ariola Headley. Welcome, Juby. Thank you, Mia, and thank you everyone for being here. The poem I'm going to read tonight is one I haven't read before to anyone. It's me trying to write across something or toward someone or some group of people. My sisters, and I mean that not biologically, but universally. And this poem is called Hot Kong. So much of who we are is birthed of ritual, and this, the holiest, a mystery to you, how calloused hands can minister such tenderness. Set you a minute in the kitchen, tuck your seat neat in the corner, where you won't miss a thing. Smell that scorch, that singe of stovetop on brass tines, so hot they hum like some perked up tuning fork. Watch those hands soothe grease along root's edge, thick, an anointing, blessing, psalm. Steal from this moment secrets no boy could ever know, that you've not got what it takes to woman your way through the dust of the day that every bomb's not for the benefit of the burn, that so much of mothering is slinging gossamer over the seer of this world, that this too is a cost, that there's always a cost. And here, near the end of it, so close you thought to clasping the key in your own artless grasp, Learn that you can't learn every secret, least the one most locked to you. How much it hurts to be a girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that piece and the vulnerability of sharing a new piece that you've never re read aloud before. So next up, I would like to invite my friend, colleague, and multi-talented artist, Dimitri Broxton, up to the mic. Welcome, Dimitri. 
Thank you. Um, I'm not normally a poet. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read two pieces. And the first one, ah, I wrote in 2001. <laughs> so quite a long time ago. And then the second one I wrote last year. Um, so you can also see the difference <laughs> between the two. Um, this one's called All They See. Um, red, white, and blue lights forced me to a halt. I need to see your ID, sir. What? I didn't know that I could be pulled over riding a bike. I have an African-American male, approximately six feet tall, 140 pounds, black hair, brown eyes. I've been traveling from a friend's house to my house. It's past midnight. I've been working all day long. I don't drive. I have no driver's license, no state ID either. I only have a passport and I don't carry it with me. Sorry, I have no ID on me. You know that you're supposed to always have one on you, right? Are you over 18? Yes, and yes, but, but I didn't know that I could be pulled over on a bike. What's well, late, and I'm pulling you over because you were swerving a little bit. It's not the law, but you should have a headlight, you know? Riding a bike intoxicated is against the law. Maybe she's never rode a bike up a steep hill. No, I'm not drunk, I'm tired and it's late. I beam at anger with her. She looks frightened, whispers into the radio, I can't hear. What is your name, sir? Dimitri Broxton. Date of birth, social security number, address. I'm never riding my bike through Piedmont again at night. Okay, we have to do a run on you, standard procedure. She waits near her cruiser. Another car pulls up, bright spotlight strains my retina, hurts my brain, makes me a deer caught in the headlights, makes me feel like a typical nigger image. I imagine my ancestors have their lion faces painted with. The spotlights flood me, I strain to see the landscape. I've been stopped right in front of my elementary school. I was the only African American in the whole uh, that went there the whole year, three years of my four years there. Okay, you have a clean record. Next time, get a headlight. You're free. <laughs> Thank you. And here's here, here's my more recent poem. It's called Father to Son. Son, I wish I had the words to tell you. You are the most beautiful being my eyes have ever seen. You are the sun, the stars, the moon, the light, and the ether. I wish I could tell you your soul was woven with 10,000 prayers that dreams from our ancestors dance through the forest of the curls on your head. I wish I could conjure the words to tell you you have the power to call forth galaxies and light this world on fire so bright you'd start a peaceful revolution. I wish my pride allowed me a moment to tell you that I respect you, that you lift me up every time my soul falls into a ditch, and I know there must be a God just because you exist. I wish I could tell you all this and more every single day so you could hold your head a little higher, walk upright like the king you are, and build pyramids from mere grains of sand. Son, I wish the world had true vision that could see you as the black genius that you are, Hearts would explode into a million sun rays, a light that would fill up every galaxy, every dark alley. I wish they didn't see a looming gangster shadow, a tsunami ready to pound them out of existence, a dark threat to their perfect porcelain world, or a storm cloud could, th that could come to block out their sunny day. I wish lion-hearted black boys like you could glide through this world, only wearing your god faces, blazing, unrelenting, and unafraid. I wish black boys like you didn't get their lights extinguished in immeasurable, mind-numbing ways daily in the blood-soaked pavements where our ancestors laid down their weary bones. I wish this world was the one that Martin dreamed of, the vision Nkrumah, Malcolm, and Nat died for, the promised land Harriet crossed river seeking, or the universe I saw the first time I gazed into your eyes. Since it's not, I'll tell you every day that you are my North Star when the bloodsuckers tried to trip you up sprout wings and sail toward the atmosphere, pull starlight from trash piles and rainbows from gutters. Above all, shine. Wow, wow. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitri, for sharing both of those. And I agree with what Yves said in the, in the chat. You are a poet. You are extremely multi-talented. So I'm always impressed every time I get to see a new side of your art. <laughs> all right, next up to the mic. We have Maliza Creates. I know you're calling in from the UK, I believe. So thank you for staying up late with us. Welcome to the mic. Uh, that's okay. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad to be back as well. 
I just love this space is so like refreshing and like brings peace to me. So thank you all for your words. Like I really appreciate it. Um, at this time, I just want to share this poem for us, for our community, just to remind us that things will be okay. Kenny said we'll be all right. Cole said change comes from inside. Lauren sang just like the water got a fine peace of mind. I am forever. Forever doesn't waste any time. Forever takes its space, then it shines. Pain have my hope minimized. Hard places, tears cried. The flower's seed broke first. The case died, then newness sprang forth. Its stem rised. Living as the ancestors prayed many times. We pass through the pain to see the day. What is believed in faith surely became the all in what we create. Seen hellish situations, but our spirit wouldn't break. Speak our vision and we watch it awake. Kept our heads high, we don't lose sight. We seen some rough days, but we kept brave cause we know fight. That's no lie, only truth. This here, the living proof. Proud of me, proud of you. Thank you. Um, this next one is from one of my projects, Hustle and Hill, Volume One, and it is titled Ain't Every Day. Ain't every day drama and mystery. Ain't every day, what are we? Ain't every day text popping up on my screen, half finished, left like it's for me to complete. I need simplicity. Yes, okay, sometimes ignorance is bliss to me. I mean that with everything till I lose someone that was everything to the stupidity. And we hear heaven ring another youth who didn't be. Gone before a wedding ring or a travel stamp and you call this humanity, tell me how is that? Best no ill intentions, get no death to my door. I rest in power, so when at war, I'm never at war. It's just listening out for the higher report. My eye of a real different sort. That's why it ain't every day counting pennies. Ain't every day watching telly. Ain't every day finding reason not to be ready. I gotta get up and get it. Can't wait for miracles or handouts. Gotta execute these plans now, whether they do or don't understand now. All of her mentality won't make me stand out. And I'm too profound to blend into the background of where I am. Living like Lauren on MTV sang or Jordan Peele's movie that band. Get out all the boxes. No claiming IDs that I do not fit. Your understanding is no longer my problem. Ain't every day saving face. Ain't every day know my place. In everyday chances made, live as you. Thank you. Thank you so much for both of those. And again, as many people have said in the chat, it's so good to hear your voice again and to see you. So thank you for joining us. Uh, next up, we have James Cagney. Welcome, James. Oh, hey, hey, how are you, Nia? It's good to see you. It's good to be here with you again. Um, I just had uh, two uh, short poems. Um, this is called uh, Jellyfish, since I was watching the uh, stream from um, Monterey Aquarium. Translucent mushrooms with stems of smoke throw long tentacles of intestinal chiffon like vintage Hollywood mink. Buttery lanterns robed in the scarlet light of eternal sleep. Heartbeats pulsing through a waveform of days. Parasols fringed with purple silk and invisible blood drifts through the salt. A paranormal entity commuting through leisure in a luminescent tunic of poison. And I was introduced to a uh, word from uh, West Africa. It's a word toguna. Um, it's, a, it's a West African word meaning a meeting house. And it made me think of something my father used to do back in the 70s when I was a kid. So this is called Toguna at 61st and Market here in Oakland, California. <laughs> 
My father's blood followed the current of the street. Spawned too, apparently. Anytime daddy wasn't home, he'd be down the street. Had a secret life there where they breathed blue 90 proof air. In those rooms, his heart defrosted, circled his chest like a catfish. Down the street was some nine blocks south and a reservoir of filth to my mother's taste. Bottom feeding old drunks, noodling nothing. In an open garage, a designated RV, a mama free living room. Drunks from my dad's long shoreman days. Haggard and grand drunks. Fallen bones and bullshit drunks. A grapevine of drunks. A bullpen of drunks. A stagger of drunks. Burdened with crossroads prophecy in blues harmonica, waggling in like bees from fresh nectar juke joints. From the hour school let out till long after the sun, the sun hung over a noisy, belligerent sea. A kind of sea shimmered between the old men, a black whiskey sea, a sky latticed with lightning Hopkins, a murder of old crow bourbon unscrewed and squawking. All right, thank you guys very, very much. Thank you so much, James. It's always wonderful to hear your poetry. So next up we have Melissa Noel. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you, Nia. And yes, I agree. Um, all the poets have been wonderful and, you know, such great connoisseurs of, of great words. And um, it's always a joy to be here. So thank you for that. Um, one thing I do want to, you know, say is that the royalty still exists in all of us. Um, in a world of modern day kings and queens embedded in the crux of hidden family bloodlines and the current relevancy of our time, we exist in the spirit of Timbuktu to every vestibule incumbent of black life struggle and power we exist as we fight for change and loving who we are in a world that sometimes thrives with us and thrives against us, we exist. So this poem that I wanna to present to you is a poem from an upcoming poetry collection. And the title of this poem is Crown. Do you wear the crown? Walking high with hands in the air, hair spiraled in sister girl twist wrapped at the top of her head like a diadem shining bright on the Gambia River. Long draping coils swathing in black gray strands streaming down the back of the Oba. Royalty of the earth, dignified colors hinged in bronze, onyx, sable caressed by the universal sun who gives birth to the black crest a crest placed up amongst the anointed stars understanding that black is required tinctured vertical horizontal hues melanin tight like charcoal birds nestled in the transatlantic hubridus percussionist sky Ventilated by crew, black souls, black wings, ibu landing with Sankofa, serendipitously swimming, marching, falling away from St. Simon's Isle. Rebellious, resistance, wanderer no more. It is undoubtedly clear our spirits will always be lifted. Our spirits will always come together, no matter what fire lives in our language, unifying all around that which is good for only the good remain. The Dogon of Mali, the do infinite stars, spiraling world secret shells nestled inside of Sirius B. 60 years of Siggy, more prominent than that of Proxima or Alpha Centauri A and B. We hold the legacy, a natural sense of kinetic energy, more powerful than the gravity existing in every galaxy, existing in every you and me, and every moon tide bathed in a luminous phenomenal synergy that pulls all forces together in harmony. Do you wear the crown? 
a crown that lives, breathes and speaks in peace, a crown that rises and supersedes all evil with love, a crown that nurtures and strives for excellence and faith, a crown that bonds families and brotherhoods from all nations, a crown that seeks to destroy anything that impedes forward progress, a crown that may look back at the past, but only to gain more knowledge and power. For this blood, this land, this inheritance is ours. Do you wear the crown? Thank you. Well, I have, I have chills listening to that piece. That was incredible. And you have a wonderful cadence about the way you read too. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Mia. Um, next up, we have Brian Franco. Welcome. Thank you, I'm sorry, I'm so late. I was having technical difficulties. Okay. I'm gonna do one poem called Our pandemic masks, face masks, modern day third eyes. When people wear pandemic masks, their eyes are reborn. When people wear pandemic masks, their eyes speak volumes for their hidden muffled mouths. When people wear pandemic masks, their eyes tell stories of exposed, unexposed truths. When people wear pandemic masks, the sun's glare etches its intentions into people's dispositions. When people wear pandemic masks, they see strangers' souls in Crayola-colored irises that confound their sensibilities. When people wear pandemic masks, a simple wink sounds like an angry foot stomp. When people wear pandemic masks, a pair of raised eyebrows feels like a one-two karate kick in the face. When people wear pandemic masks, they are transformed into mild-mannered luchadors. When people wear pandemic masks, they pretend every day is not Halloween. When people wear pandemic masks, they wait in long lines for open-air breaths. When people wear pandemic masks, they decide to breathe tomorrow. When people wear pandemic masks, they breathe, they see, they cannot hide their eyes. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that piece. You're welcome. All right, next up, we have Tarita McKell. Welcome, Tarita. Hi. Hi. Wow. Powerful, powerful work. Oh my goodness, I loved, uh, I, I'm thankful to Yeva for catching the, the phrases. Thank you, Yeva, for doing those pieces there. Do you wear the crown? <laughs> wow. Um, so following through, believing each of us have a space to work and I work what I need. So here we go. Mo you ba, fefe egun. We stand on the shoulders of one of our honored ancestors, Dr. Ben, who said, if you believe this Noah's Ark story to be true, it explains why you are in the conditions you are in today. Details derail liberation. Rolling up on big wheels, revelation, the epiphany. Somebody's manifest destiny a theory discovered waiting to be real, compared to what? Whose liberty do we trust? Who be the judge, the adjudicator, the mediator, the referee between the father, son, and his ghost fantasy? I don't hear a woman mentioned in this trilogy. Is she ghost? Heard freedom ring at Jojo's house the other day, singing with Mickey's monkey, dum da la 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 la. Derailing emancipation, crippling insights of human consideration, negotiating peace. Which peace? Who'll be the umpire to decide 
which side of homonyms bread sliced is buttered. Details derailed harmonized views argues well against all manufacturers consent rules, handpicks host, herd <laughs> hegemonic milk toast infuses cheap shit in shallow water, tells us try it, you'll like it. Like Mikey, he ate everything. Hollywood's views on alternative facts sold out on TV news racks, traces, nouns, verbs, conjured words. Coins acronyms for dollars, 1% minority authors, the good decision. Supplies fresh cow patties sprinkled with powdered sugar exceeding old factories threshold socializing PTSD wormholes. Breath, mass, drop, scope. Strung out on fairy tale dope, Jack falls down, breaks his crown, Jill comes running after, you've been clown fool, but I got you, don't worry about the future. Farmer got drugs to numb, son. Details derail sense. Generations hooked like fish on illusion of inclusion, sublime dish. You too can be a human crucifix. Want to be like Jesus. Jesus for sale, Jesus in jail, Jesus on the corner, Jesus needs bail. Jesus executed past the plate, derails sunflowers, bees. ARC covenant with SUN biology in favor of sadistic seats, AI viral five technology. Details decked necks with bowels of folly. Effing with thoracic melody, hearts freeze in lyricidal symphony, trafficking mind, body, and soul. Two seconds from sauce by control. Six tongues to flat poles pledging allegiance with dependence tagged one nation underdog, his best friend, with liberty and justice for all. Sit, heal, stay, obey, unconditionally, no responsibility, love your enemy. Some said they would name names in protest of those trying to break their sex and wreck their nest. Others said, chill, be still, hear, see, and speak no evil. Details derail metaphysical tones, metaphysical bone thought sin if hypervigilance is sown. And the people bifurcated in fear of C9 funk affliction, drop judgment, watched suicides, hunger, homelessness, police murders, and addictions increase. Racial narcissists deliver totalitarian disease. Trust it will decrease critical think with teary eyes asking why, Lord, why did you say, physician, heal thyself? How can we heal if we can't judge the cards you've dealt? Haiku, can you play leapfrog? Water getting hotter now. Where are you gonna jump? Which ark got your covenant? Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarita. Thank you. Your voice is always, as many people have said, so soothing and wonderful to hear. So I'm going to share a couple of pieces and then introduce our featured poet for this evening. So this first piece is entitled, To Build a Revolution in Seven Tongues after Ellen Bepp's unity. One, bless the earth we borrow time from. Every tear we shed carries salt from the seas our mothers and grandmothers fought their way across. Two, count the calluses on your palms, name each after your parents' hardest sacrifice. Three, Braid white flags into your hair. Keep needles in the corner of your mouth, ever ready to craft a new symbol for freedom. Four, mistake history for war and bury it. And then unbury it when you are called to give truth a second chance. Five, 
collect all the seeds of justice and make green capitalism's casket. Six, erect a monument out of fire. Seven, call protest by her nickname, Unity. We must act quick before we forget what loss feels like across oceans. We must rebuild futures in our communal imagination. We must grow certainty in liberated gardens. We, we as in oneness, we as in we are all part of one another. We as in tomorrow's world is ours to build. We, as in there is no freedom without each other. And then this next piece, I will be returning to a classic, which is unfortunately still very relevant. This is entitled, Say Her Name. They locked up history today, barred the doors, threw away the key and called her truth false. Four walls between her and her children said, hush, these walls not for talking, only home wrecking. It is here we learn grievance cannot be rehearsed. Justice only got catcalled once today. Not bad for a missing woman. If she's invisible in the first place, who is to say she was ever here? Sis got taken too. So now we take to the streets saying no justice, no peace. We yell our sister's names against the chorus of what she have on, to which we cry, Defiance. Oh, so she was asking for it. <laughs> to which we remind them, nobody's got time to look inviting when there are revolutions hiding beneath our tongues. What's that? You couldn't hear over all the white noise? It's here we learn fragility doesn't listen anyways. So as history tells us, we must repeat ourselves. No justice, no peace. Thank you. And so now it is my great honor to introduce our feature for this evening, Raymond Nat Turner. The town crier, Raymond Nat Turner is a New York City poet privileged to have read at the Harriet Tubman Centennial Symposium in Auburn, New York, where he is considered to be a special son. Turner is the artistic director of the Stallworth Jazz Poetry Ensemble, Upsurge, and has appeared at numerous festivals and venues, including the Monterey Jazz Festival and the Panafest in Ghana, West Africa. Currently, he is the poet in residence at the Black Agenda uh, Black Agenda Report, um, Raymond Nat Turner um, is also Ralph Pointer's What's Happening, um, where he's appeared in their blog talk radio. He's also a frequent contributor to Dissent Voice, Struggle, and other online and print publications. Turner has opened for such people as James Baldwin, People's Advocate Cynthia McKenney, progressive sports writer Dave Zurn, and California Congresswoman Barbara Lee following her lone vote against attacking Afghanistan. He describes himself as the following. I'm a cultural worker and not fond of the idea of having a brand. The one 92 year old New York colleague calls me the town crier. I think in terms of creating content in service of struggle for social change, telling the truth as I understand it, sometimes it resonates. Welcome, welcome Raymond. If ever I would leave you, 
wouldn't be in summer seeing you in summer i never would go your hair streaked with sunlight your dress red as flame your box will luster that puts gold to shame her promise implied to never leave this jagged hole in my soul was just shredded. Goose flesh growls, runs, shouts, swoops, leaps, ad libs are left. Her voice belongs to the universe for other planets to marvel at. I don't want to say her name. Don't want to hear headlines. Read scribblers who feel my pain. Talking heads who most weekdays rip flesh from black bones. It's not business, it's personal. Like losing some of my soundtrack when Brother Ray checked out or my two-week depression when Sass stepped off stage. But if there's a place for us outside plantations, beyond the call and response of bull whips, if there's a place for us, above gun towers and concertina wire. Our Ma Rainey, Bessie Smith's Lady Days, Nina's and Aretha's take us there. So I tip my cap and sing praise not to monarchy propped up on a throne of dried blood, skulls and bones. A rusty chain of fools. I tip my cap singing praise, panther style to my minister of medicine, servant of the people, darling doctor feel good, practicing universal health care from spiritual free clinics in her throat. I tip my cap singing praise, Grammys, medals, honorary degrees, halls of fame, streets named Aretha Franklin Way speak for themselves. I tip my cap singing praise medleys and think telling teams, don't play that song. Think being a bridge over troubled water for Flint making water weaponizers jump to it, getting the lead out. Think telling ice kidnappers of children, ain't no way. Um, that's for you, Nia, that's a, a tribute to you. It's, it's, I wrote it for Re, Aretha Franklin, but uh, it's called R-E-S-P-E-C-T, and um, I think I wanted to uh, dedicate that to you tonight because I so appreciate and respect the job you do in terms of creating space for all of us who come to the um, open mic. And, and uh, I'm, I'm coming to you from, I'm coming struggling from in solidarity from Ohlone land, or also known as the town or Oak Town. Thank you so much, Raymond. That means a lot. <laughs> and while we're on the um, hero tip, 
Uh, this is called Langston, in Langston's home. Uh, I had an opportunity, a privilege, pleasure to um, be part of a program that was done at Langston Hughes' home uh, last year. In Langston's home, Harlem, you do as Langston did. Love the jazz, the blues, words, acts, pages, and stages. In Langston's home, Harlem, you do as Langston did. Love the people, their problems, pains, and triumphs. In Langston's home, Harlem, you do as Langston did. You wake up asking, what has Harlem become this morning? Each day is different. This Manhattan morning, your favorite coffee shop's a bank, and by noon, the other bank will be another phone store. The farmer phone store, a dog grooming salon, and so forth and so on. In Langston's home, Harlem, you do as Langston did. You wake asking, what has Harlem become this morning? And you find the cute couple with the quiet kids are gone, disappeared, deported to Haiti. Though they are Jamaican and Mexican, you find the Bodega brothers are headed back to Yemen to be bombed by backwards butchers of fossil fuel infamy. In Langston's home, Harlem, you do as Langston did. You wake one morning smiling, you speak, you say, Good morning, revolution. And um, this, unfortunately, uh, for us, is somewhat of a, a segment or series. And um, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about once I get into it. It's, this first one is called Gunmen Kill Again. Another Disney set of sci-fi where pigs fly in firing squad formations under color of law. And we hear hot bees sting a young man's back, severing vertebrae crashing colon, leaving bits of bone arm on ruby red river. Another mother's son nearly stolen, not lost, and he didn't pass away. And our tear droughts betray us. We know that gunmen Serial rerun men will raise right hooves and test a lie about body cams muted and special effects, black men puffing up as Hulk, transmuting themselves into black magic stuntmen who simultaneously run away and moonwalk to corrupt commands. Superman metallurgist, saucers who turn wallets, candy bars, keys, phones into guns and knives. And um, many of you, I suspect, have been following the, the news and uh, just the other night in uh, Wisconsin, uh, Kenosha, to be exact, uh, this uh, young 17-year-old uh, killed at least two people and wounded two others very seriously. 
And I believe that uh, the groundwork for that was laid a long time ago, but in most recent history and most recently uh, the last, over the last several months during the lockdown, there were armed groups who went to state capitals and barged their way in and um, created a lot of um, mayhem. In any case, this is called 1% Funded Rally Actors. Reopen America as colonial settler thugs opened her. Oceans of blood, rivers of tears, calling all rally actors, calling all rally actors for psy wars, for encores from gun stores, old hardcores, gun-toting rally actors who ride or die, Black Panther Party types need not apply. Liberate Michigan, liberate Minnesota, liberate Virginia, Boots on down, bones for wheat, who believes we pump down Appomattox and bothering Pittsburgh Chinese hoax. Calling all rally actors, calling all rally actors for side wars, for encores from gun stores, oh, hardcores, gun toting rally actors who ride or die. Black Panther Party types need not apply. Liberate Michigan, liberate Minnesota, liberate Virginia. Signature strike shock in all assemblies and senates. Build black sites in St. Paul. Bases in Lansing. Move the Warhouse, Capitalist Hill, and White Supreme Court to Commonwealth Richmond, employ enhanced interrogation techniques, waterboard all unappreciative governors, calling all rally actors, calling all rally actors for side wars, for, from gun stores, old hardcores, gun-toting rally actors who ride or die, black Panther party types need not apply. Liberate Michigan, liberate Minnesota, liberate Virginia, calling on for a few good men who think solidarity sucks. The business of a is business and profit over people is as good as it gets. Calling for a few good men who love the rich, the right to work, as nail salon, barbershop, tattoo parlor partisans, infected fighter stuntmen, as Confederate flag waving extras, fox box high value targets in harm's way, collateral damage, lust and fossil fuel money flowing like fracking fluid. Calling all rally actors, calling all rally actors for side wars, for encores from gun stores, old hardcores, gun toting rally actors who ride or die. Black Panther Party types need not apply. Calling all AstroTurf Tea Party players, Charlottesville veterans preferred to play Rosa Park. This is called essential work. We'll always need race car drivers roaring down streets where children chase balls. Like we'll always need peaceful protesters pepper sprayed like cockroaches. And we'll always need sleeping seven year olds shot while dreaming of dolls, sleepovers, tooth fairies. We'll always need children playing with toy guns in parks, executed before becoming Hulk Hogan's. We'll always need doors kicked in and our daughters and sons slaughtered in wee hours, even if it is the wrong address. 
We'll always need elderly parents whacked for accidentally pressing emergency alerts. Like we'll always need mentally ill loved ones massacred in our homes. We'll always need men rushing pregnant wives to hospitals shot for speeding. And fathers of six hustling too hard, chokehold lynched. We'll always need women who drive and smoke, stopped and suicided, and mothers wearing masks wrong, wrestled down in subway stations as their four-year-olds watch. We'll always need wallets mistaken for guns, glocks for tasers, fleeing black men shot in their backs, and bridegrooms butchered night before their weddings. We'll always need tasered hearts, skanking in reggae rhythms, and broken broomsticks rammed up men's rectums for fun. We'll always need bruised, bloody, disfigured faces, eyeballs dangling from sockets. We'll always need drugs and guns planted, growing into cases, concertina wire, COVID-19. We'll always need right hooves raised, testaline to judges and juries of peers on the need for knees on necks. 56 licks or 41 shots served to protect property. And this is a very short piece called He Feared for His safety. He feared for his safety, feared it wouldn't release fast enough to shoot the fleeing black man in the back. For Breonna Taylor and my bride, my daughter's name is Brianna Turner. Oh, I wish I could sing her name like Brother Ray or Cause Breonna Taylor real close to Brianna Turner to me. I wish I could sing her name name, like Abby, Nina, or Big Paul, celebrating the sunny June home birth, I recall. I wish I could sing her name, like Mahalia or Clara Ward, feeling my hand again, cutting an umbilical cord. I wish I could sing her name, like Sarah or Natalie Cole. But the recorder reminds me that that's not my role. I wish I could sing her name like Little Richard or Betty Wright, hearing Mingus's Haitian song urging us to fight. I wish I could sing her name and other names other towns galvanizing Black folks and 50 million John Browns. This is called, um, it, oh, how's my time, is it? You're good, you're good. Okay, because I hear beeping or something. Oh, so it's, I guess it's technology over here. So this is called the Real National Anthem. Uh, big props to the great John Lee Hooker. Boom, 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 boom. Gotta shoot you right down. Boom, 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 boom. No matter what town. Boom, 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 boom. Yet another good shoot. Boom, 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 boom. Lynching. 
at the root. Boom, 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 boom. No need for a trial. Boom, 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 boom. Done plantation style. Boom, 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 boom. Big or tiny town. Boom, 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 boom. Shut the up down. And on, on into another area that's somewhat related. Um, you know, I think um, on the one hand, voting can have its um, place and be very important. And however, I don't think that it's the end all be all. I think that uh, as a carpenter or a mechanic would come to your home to work on your house or your apartment or car, and they came with only a wrench or a hammer, I, I don't think you would have very much confidence in them. So similarly, I think that for us uh, to liberate ourselves, to emancipate ourselves, and when I say ourselves, I mean, first and foremost, African-Americans, African people, Black people, and the whole of humanity, uh, we need a number of tools. We need uh, marches. We need uh, boycotts, um, letters, emails, phone calls, and voting. It fits in there. And so um, it's important to get rid of Boss Tweet. Uh, he, he's definitely a menace to all of humanity. However, uh, that wouldn't, wouldn't um, be the end of our task. You know, people should not, if he is out, people should not go back to sleep. So anyway, this is called a bad trip. If you think, and this is a quote from Paul Coelho, if you think adventure is dangerous, try routine. It's lethal, the end of quote. Would you take a road trip every four years, cross country in a car, smoking and burning oil? A car with a leaking radiator, ball tires, no jack, worn shocks and bad brakes? Would you take a road trip every four years, cross country in a car with a panhandle shaped crack in its windshield, a car with worn windshield wipers, busted headlights, burned out taillights and no turn signals? Would you take a road trip every four years, cross country in a car with no heater or air conditioner, a car with an AM radio with only one station, a musty, uncomfortable car registered to two old, half blind, belligerent, uninsured, drunk drivers armed to the teeth arguing over who will drive. And along that same line, I wrote this uh, a long, long time ago, and it's specifically directed uh, to African-American people. And it's called Soul Singers, and that's S-O-L-D sold singers. Singing against backgrounds of crackling flames, so low their bass reverberated Booker T, drowning out shouts and shots of us no names, the big voices all crooned way, way, way off key, 
meant fresh faces of Franklin, Cleveland, and Chase inspired their song with an amazing grace, restricting our rhythms to a mellow pace. Black is beautiful, but green power sounds sweeter, not rocking the boat. Being dutiful, seize the hour and let us lower our note. Singing shuffling ditties as the 70s swung in, they rocked like Booker T and other sold men. Oh, so low, they'd sing a simple song. The best things in life are free. So what if loving you is wrong? You can't prove that by me. Oh, they'd even get down like James Brown on bended knees, screaming and a begging, baby, please, please. Baby, please go vote. The battle no longer in the street. Baby, please go vote. We fight now for leather seats. Baby, please go vote. I know the white man done you wrong. Baby, please go vote. Elect me and make us strong. Baby, please go vote. You suffered enough, heaven knows. Baby, please go vote. Elect me and I'll heal your woes. Baby, please go vote. I, I, want to be your next congressman. Baby, please go vote. I promise to ban the Ku Klux Klan. Baby, please go vote. Look into all racist attacks. Baby, please go vote. From the hills across the tracks. Baby, please go vote. So don't protest or demonstrate. Baby, please go vote. Elect me, I'll negotiate. Baby, please go vote. I, 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 I. Promises, 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 promises and their makers come and go till we sing, we shall overthrow. And then I think I'm going to um, try, if I, I'm gonna do at least this one and then maybe if there's time, I'll do one more and then I'll, that'll be it if, if I'm keeping within time. I think this is very important as a, a contrast to the previous two. This is called, Ooh, What a Little Movement Can Do. And here, this is a quote. There are decades where nothing happens. And there are weeks where decades happen. And I think the period uh, following George Floyd's murder uh, is really instructive in that regard. It, it, it show just how things can really move very fast and very far in a short, short period of time. Ooh, 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 ooh. What a little movement can do for you. Ooh, 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 ooh. what a little movement can do for you. U.S. killer cops are being fired and arrested because worldwide, mighty tens of millions protested. Quick, fast, and in a hurry, 
out of desperation. The Dems are writing reams of toothless legislation, legislation piling up like pearly bells of cotton, and everyone's mouthing, capitalism is rotten. Bought and paid for ones, Don Kente cloth, taking bended knees. They're even doing splits, begging, baby, please, please. Ooh, ooh, ooh. what the movement can do for you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. what the movement can do for you. Cop calling Karens, getting called out and fired. Uncle Ben and Aunt Jemima have finally retired. Slavery stars and bars got banned at NASCAR and Euro drivers rallied behind the one black star. Glorious struggles gifting us time to cheer and brag. Mississippi even pulled down the slaver's rag. Suddenly, Confederate statues are tumbling down, and young Euros are speaking the most fluent John Brown. Ooh, 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 what the movement can do for you. Ooh, 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 what the movement can do for you. Rechristening parks, plazas, schools, streets at warp speed. Steeled elders mentor warrior youth for the lead. Staunch youth learning world change ain't a spectator sport. Joining longshore workers, shutting a major world port. Workers kicking racist gun thugs out of labor's house as Democratic Party preachers play the church miles. Not Yankees, Raiders, Warriors, the GOAT, or LeBron. Time for sitting on the sidelines as long, long gone. Ooh, ooh, ooh what the movement can do for you. Ooh, 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 what the movement can do for you. New generations learning in the college of the streets, testing in tear gas and other phenomenal feats. Youth beaten, mace, tear gas, arrested and tortured. Don't pluck bad apples from a whole rotten orchard. Growing weary of pleas for peaceful coexistence, learning the awesome power of active resistance. Street heats clearly shouting normal. Don't live here no more. And now his whole fracking family has got to go. Ooh, 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 ooh. What a little movement can do for you. And then finally, tonight is so apropos for this. Uh, the, uh, the, Clown in a rug, a tweet, DC, a lie, a cheat, embellish and broader, a lying disorder, a myth, a fable, a bit unstable, flim flam, clap trap, bunkum, bull crap, an empty wagon, a puffed up dragon, a whopper, a fib, you pee from your crib, a sham, a fake. A major mistake, a pathological lying, false flag flying, a grope, a trope, bad jokes, breast strokes, a grope of a crotch, another man out worth a deep botch, over water and scotch, a trumped up story, cock and bull glory, a foot in the mouth for strategy south, pie in the sky, a bare face lie, pig in disguise, Fooling some eyes, playing fast and loose with Jim Jones juice, a masquerade, a Nazi parade, fake great nation, same plantation, a bug in the hall, a fly on the wall, a great big whale, an ongoing tale, a parade in July, a wink of an eye, enough I'll cry. 
the other clown in a rug, a tweet, DC, a lie, a cheat, tied four feet in the street, sustaining street heat. Thank you. Thank you for your kind attention. And uh, thank you for having me, uh, Nia. And thank you so much, Raymond, for that incredible feature. It was absolutely wonderful getting to hear like a whole range of your work. You are incredibly talented. Um, and I just ask that if you can put in the chat or tell folks now what ways we can continue to support you or find more of your work, or if you have any other, uh, other upcoming features, we would all love to attend and support. Okay. Um, okay, I'll do that. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone. And um, I, I just want to say once again, as I indicated earlier, I, I think you've created a wonderful space for um, artists, particularly poets, to gather and um, work on things and, you know, have community. And uh, so uh, all praise to you. You know, I really have a lot of respect for the work you've done. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. That really means a lot. And I'm glad to hear that because we are definitely here creating community and it's important. And so now I'm going to introduce our second half of the event. We still have several open mic readers to close us out for this evening. First of which I would like to invite Norm Maddox to start the second half off. Welcome Norm. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much, Ray, for a wonderful set and I'll do my best to follow up. This piece is called Immigrant. We are all strangers on this island continent. If one has a family of melanin cells looking like connected freckles, if one has more than English born in their mouth, speaking their grandmother tongues too, if one thinks that the story of the earth began when they took their first steps across her lands. If one thinks they were saved when they killed indigenous peoples who belonged to the earth and not the other way around. We are all, we will all be disposable refugees because we did not have our stories written into his American story because we did not control our destiny while they manifested Manifest Destiny, another name for white privilege. The second piece is called Polite Rage. Run me off the cliff, rage. Life ain't never fair, rage. The end is always the same, rage can't see through my outraged tears, rage. Holla out the windows, rage. Did I say holla? I meant howl at the heavens, rage. I had to have that talk with my 12 year old me, the last human being I'll ever be again, rage. Now I am a black man outraged by his polite rage. How do I, how do I hyperventilate adrenaline to howl at the four winds, rage that won't be denied? No way to uncry the tears boiling out of my eyes, burning my cheeks, can't see the road holding onto the steering wheel for dear life enraged that my poetic rage is trying to assuage my self-hating rage, looking for words to use like missiles, a caliber that won't fit down any barrel. Having words instead of sledgehammers, pen strokes instead of slashing blades to make my point. It worked this time. Sometimes it won't. Get me home safe. If I speak without being spoken to, or show my hands empty of everything except my palms, and they too might be mistaken for fill in the blank. 
I will feel this rage as long as I am black in this America. Cur, cur. Looking in my rear view mirror, being followed by my profile, will my 12 year old me survive my rage? Peace. Thank you. Thank you, Norm, for both of those pieces. Always timely, always wonderful to hear you. Thank you so much once again for creating this space up in here, Nia. Feels like home. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Next up, I would like to have T Watts up to the mic. Welcome, T. I always try to unmute at the wrong spot. Thank you, Nia. Thank you, everyone. Such a powerful session tonight. Thank you, Nia, for being a vigilant moderator. Thanks to Moad for having this space. Thank God for bringing us all together. And thank us for joining us. Brother Raymond Nat Turner, I bow down, brother, I bow down. <laughs> um, I'm gonna read two poems tonight. One, for me, the beauty of poetry is, you know, when you, when you find a poem written by somebody else, that stays with you the rest of your life uh, is very powerful. And this poem I'm gonna read sustained me through a very dark time in my life. I was so low, I couldn't even see over the, the sidewalk curb. It's by a poet from Ghana. His name is Francis Ernest Kobina Parks. And the title of the poem is Apocalypse. In the last days, strange sights shall visit the earth. Sights that may turn to blood the moon, this sun to midnight in the last days. But now, when swords are not yet plowshares and spears still spears, hearken you my little ones. If walking shaded by the mango tree or running naked, scorched by this blazing sun, you ought perceive now while the arrow remains arrow and the miracle of spears and pruning hooks still remains an unseen miracle. Remember my little ones, if perchance your infant feet do slide and you find yourselves in some mysterious dungeon of black, vengeful Sasaban Sam in realms where dogs make speech and horns adorn the human front, where mermaids in their skirts of silvery scales and chattering sea beasts flout mankind, if in this strange subhuman realm, your eyes fall on a stone, a hard black stone, lifeless and muddy that has grown a beard. Pray children, pass silently by, ask no questions. For you are face to face with the first days and the beginning and the end are one. And in the end shall strange sights visit earth. Stones shall be turned to men and men to stones. Sparrows beget eagles and sand become good grain. So children, if perchance you see a hare that roars or an ape perched in a in a palanquin, look on in silence, quickly pass by, quickly. And my second poem, final poem, is a poem I wrote recently. And the title of it is Fake Gumbo Coma. And I humbly dedicate this to the folks caught up in Hurricane Laura 
right now. I'm getting ready for the fake gumbo coma. Our quest in this western urn of plenty wrath hath served us fake crab meat, precursor to the third reconstruction of descent. Don't be too sleep to repent. <laughs> What, what's that you say, Brother Bob Marley? Sleep is an escape for fools? Or even Brother Joe Tex, who advised, if you hear a voice in the middle of the night telling you to get up, you listen, you better get on up. Push away from the table. The meat is fake. That ain't real filet. That ain't Andouille. That sausage ain't Andouille. Be not rushed as we unfurl ourselves finally from this day. It's like Mississippi Johnny Waters told me late one night as he prepared to go on stage with a band of cranksters trying to play the blues. Man, these white boys can't rush me into nothing. Thank you. Thank you, T. Thank Glad you. to have you in the space again. Thank you. Next up, we have Sarai Bordeaux. Welcome, Sarai. Hi, everybody. I would like to echo the, the community-ness that I feel <laughs> right now. I just, I really appreciate how, how like tons of folks are able to speak on what seemed like very similar things with such like and seemingly similar perspectives right but with such like varying words and experiences and so it's always an honor and a, like a pleasure to be around folks and also kind of going off of what T said like I'm in Mississippi right now but I'm in Jackson like the center of the state and so we're getting like stormy rain right now but just like shouts out to all the folks being affected by Hurricane Laura right now and also like all the fires in California like just sending out major vibes to folks, you know, intersecting with natural disasters and yet other disasters. It's all a thing. So, you know, just vibes and love to everybody. Um, I just wrote this today. It's like very fresh, very, very fresh. <sighs> Sometimes I get confused. Are we praying to the same gods? Like, are we wanting to save the same universe are we using the same definitions when we say the same words because being a master means different things to different people i'm over here trying to master this waking this sobriety freshly this degree but for some it's our bodies an oppression not just a killing but a genocide a slow one and each a confusion a departing for me, what's hard, what's hard, what's hard about seeing our humanity? For them, it's why don't you just lay down and take it? Sometimes I look at these two definitions and wonder which was the school trying to lock me into? It's a matter of knowledge and care, but for whom? Who should we understand? Who should we care for? Does care matter? Is revenge safe only for some? What is a vengeance? What is the difference? There's confusion here. Do I strive to become a part of this or risk my life resisting? There's no Michelle Obama or Mary Jane high enough to encompass this chasm between definitions, space between this wealth of opportunity gap these pipelines and red lines, they follow a formula perfecting the idea of supremacy so that one type of master is held higher than any other. What is our sacred geometry here? Where does our sacred geometry fit into at this point? I'm reading articles about billion dollar longevity industries trying to help people sustain through face creams and smoothies while I wonder, 
the most present possibility in helping us extend our lives is to get the police and white teenagers to stop killing us. Sitting here, listening to singing bowls and singing bowls and singing bowls and singing bowls, wondering who is trying to raise the vibrations of prosecutors and wardens, these women's pulling their triggers in the park and at the lake, using the triggers of the state to manifest weaponized destiny and now. At this intersection of pandemics, cameras still don't guarantee justice, respectability still doesn't guarantee we will see another day. Mastery, the road to mastery is a long one. How does my black woman sacred history fit into the equation at this point? Giving unconditionally of our everything and condition not to talk about it unless our strength is asked for or needed, providing for and then stole it from. A savior and a target, a threat, lover and the most hated, sexualized and then stripped of any and every pleasure. This road is full of questioning. How do I claim my healing when no one is willing to admit the harm, tired of all the thank yous when you won't first say you're sorry. On more and more days though, I don't need your apology. Fuck those thank yous too. Don't need to know what's going on in your brain, tired of anticipating your moods. Gratitude is an action. I don't need your emptiness to tell me what I need to do. Now that I've jumped through all these hoops, I know the difference in definition between masters is a matter of values. Adding to institutional hypocrisy is not one of mine, at least I don't want it to be. So I spend my time tearing down my insides, letting them shatter and, sh and break Letting them recongeal, I stretch my spirit into every millimeter of this body like a butterfly, like baby green lizards adapting to both treetops and the ground floor, I session like Octavia. The genius, Miss Butler, asking myself questions that stretch my imagination past the still life of oppression I've been painted into. I cut myself out, cut us out, and then paste us back into the center of my thoughts, of my conversation. I'm imagining a world where, not, where white hate is not protected, where their fear of my ancestors and me no longer punctuates my experience, where they no longer start and end the sentences that define me, where adversity is not given credit for my greatness, I'm trying to master the art of ignoring such whiteness, such capitalism, such patriarchy, working on feeling safe to do so. Every day choosing like I choose my sobriety, how to engage ideas I've been fed about mastery. The language we use to describe getting what we've worked for, what in fact we should work for, I'm unlearning the idea that it's possible for someone to own me, that it's okay to belong to myself solely and to this liberation. Where is the space for growing my sacred geometry? It is in the space between the storm or a fire as cleansing and as destruction, every action a choice, every breath in gratitude, every word in a vengeance, butchering a definition of a master that never meant for the chains to come off. I belong in every space. My ancestors ash between my teeth. I taste their resolve on my tongue, solving for me an equation, taking my confusion, ordering my steps to a space where some definitions won't matter anymore a space where new words can come alive and where words we haven't heard in a long time take root again. Where reading and running and playing and gardening are safe things. Where falling asleep and waking up on the daily is possible. Where waiting up in fear is not a cultural 
pastime where it is safe to be born and to live and then to die in peace, non-conforming in peace, man in peace, woman in peace, where humanity is ours again, where we are ours again, where we thrive again as a whole, where we ourselves are whole again without fear, where our sacred geometry is seen one with nature again, where our thoughts and prowess are not fake again, forever and ever, amen. Thank you so much, Sarai, for sharing that piece. And I'm very impressed with your ability to write that today. <laughs> I'm very impressed. But thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. Next up to the mic, I'd like to invite Tatiana Bayukin. Welcome. Nia, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna read one piece because it's the hardest thing I ever wrote. It's called Brianna. It's for Brianna Taylor. Uh, darkness comes when you least expect. It comes without warning. Only yesterday, your life was full of dreams that you fought so hard to achieve. It was filled with music and laughter, loving family and good friends. Brianna, my sweet sister, why did it have to end like this? They didn't have to shoot. You didn't have a gun. In the world full of dreamers and dreams fulfilled, why do we have to be afraid of a straight bullet in the night or a knock on the door? Why do we have to be afraid of the police? Only yesterday, you were a caring friend, a healer and a dreamer, a force to be reckoned with. You're gone and we're left with what? Silence, nothing? Brianna, my sweet sister, you're with God now. You're living among the stars. And we, who are left behind, are gonna write your name up in the sky. We will honor your life. We will speak for the dead. There can be no future without justice, no life without hope, no victory without struggle. Last night and the night before, unable to sleep, thinking of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that beautiful tribute to Brianna Taylor. Thank you. So Yeva is up next. <laughs> Yeva is ready. Welcome up to the mic. Thank you so much. I have two short poems surrounded by some music. And I'll just get to it. Practice. Practice, you shall pursue. I meditated twice, turned my leftovers into something interesting for dinner. I even visited my kids and gave my husband a present that was truly a gift of love and kindness, despite our likely permanent separation. I went to work even though my cells screamed no, no, don't. Every step of the way there. The day slipped past. I got a little reading in, but that untold thing which had been keeping me going for over five years had to wait for me to watch Hannah Gadsby's show Douglas for the second time. Like a queer black Cinderella, I arrived at my dining room table with only one shoe on, frantically scratching at this paper before the clock struck midnight and my poet's spell would break. This is Daily Mantra. When I take my last breath, there will be no time for regrets, but I don't regret a thing every triumph sweet, 
every mistake the door to a new world of growth. When I sing my last prayer, I may not be in the synagogue, but I will lend my voice to poets and lovers of peace everywhere. When I eat my last meal, I hope it is savory and fresh, but I will be thankful regardless of the source, any nourishment, a gift to the body, even on its last day. When my heart beats its last, let the rhythm join the dances of my ancestors, but please leave a pulsation in my children's hearts to carry this music for justice into the future. When I think my last thought, let it be filled with gratitude for this gift of life, love, and chosen kin. But I Thank you. Thank you so much, Yeva. Your poetry and your music is beautiful as ever. It's wonderful to have you back. Next up to the mic, we have Lanisha Murphy. Welcome. It was not letting me unmute myself. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I don't know why I'm so nervous tonight. Mm. Um, I have two pieces I'm going to read, so I'm just going to get to it. I usually don't name my stuff, so mine are a little different from everybody else's, but here we go. Um, this feeling is so alien. Dependency. Need. Co wants to attach itself, and I cerebrally will it not to. I am uncomfortable and don't know how to feel this connectedness. I was connected once, I think, to others, to other, reached out when stumbling, grasping when broken. There were times I was embraced, when I was caught from the free fall, my landing soft, other times, bones shattered. So I began bracing myself, mouth closed, eyes agape, not willing to take the chance of having to grope the solitary darkness to put my pieces back together. My shell, intact. Just the occasional, ever so slight chip, easily patched with an accolade, a new academic e e endeavor, a novel use of vocabulary, and yet another, full, another fanciful piece of prose. And now grief, like turpentine, erodes this carefully manicured armor, slowly dismantling the vestiges of safety called success. That was my first one. Um, and my second one, I'm just going to read that one too. There is genuine curiosity to what this process is like for you, to see my life captured in backward sequences, wondering the steps that led from here or the, wondering the steps that led here from there. Was it bearable or merely stepping stones to the next leap? And now, after almost 20 years, you have details, 10 digits in a definite location. I don't know why I feel so exposed. Like that night when you undressed me and made me look at myself, my true form in the mirror, I think I finally saw a glimpse of her. And there is this part of me now that just wishes you could jump on a plane, now that this exposure has occurred, to show me whom you see now. But these, these are the musings of a mad woman, a woman caught up in, this, in a moment of nostalgia as you pick up my life where you trailed off while reviewing my cover letter and resume. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lenny. I just love how reflective both of your pieces are and your writing in general. 
So it's nice to have you back on the mic too. So we have just a few more readers, but next up, I would like to invite Dee Allen. Welcome Dee. There we go. I'm only gonna do like two poems for the night and neither one of these have been published anywhere. So before I go into any of them, a little Zoom room etiquette. If you like what you hear coming out of me tonight, you could, you could respond by either writing your comments in Zoom chat, private message me, or press the reactions button for hands clapping or thumbs up. And these, and these two pieces are new. This one is called Yosemite. I want to store Yosemite, the great valley, large yawning mouth of Sierra Nevada, Yosemite, three hours, 21 minutes driving distance east from Oakland, home for now. Half Dome, El Capitan, Tioga Pass, Glacier Point, Bridal Veil Fall, Tanaya Lake, Tulumid Meadow, Unicorn Peak, Lyle Fork. Waterfalls are practically in the clouds, snow-capped alpine range, closing in on puny evergreen trees. Lower hills explode in the spring, flashing orange and gold and purple eopines and poppies. Conflagration of colors in Yosemite, Northern California Shrine of Granite, subject of whole, of, or, whole ornate Ansel Williams black and white snapshots. Yosemite, the Great Valley in California. I hope to visit before my slender body expires and I'll store every vision in the basement of my heart. And that piece is called Yosemite. It's about an area of California I have yet to visit. And before I'm like dead, I want to at least see it someday. And the next and the next and last piece is more of a pandemic poem. But this one's a little more positive than the others that I've written in the past several months. And it's mercifully short. It's my first attempt at flash or microfiction. And this was inspired by an email sent to me by a friend of mine in Berkeley. This is called Reclaim. From out of nowhere flew an owl, just moved into the trees, new to a block in Berkeley. The night stillness is instantly filled with his frequent singing recalling to one house resonant at least the sound of the woods. Somehow wild birds could sense a vacancy, absence of human activity on a block. While the humans under quarantine stayed in their homes, the birds left theirs. Nests have gone empty so they can reclaim the streets for their own winged kindred. Tweets, chirps, caw calls, and hoot hoots are louder than ever and clearer to human ears willing to receive the cacophony of diverse speak songs. Spotify can wait. While the urban world, what the urban world had usurped, nature proceeded to take back. And that last poem was called Reclaim about that moment during the early days of the pandemic when everybody stayed the hell at home. And while all that was going on, all, the, all of the earth's creatures just came out of hiding and took back what civilization has took away from them. In this case, a block, a suburban block in Berkeley got taken over by all different species of birds. And I dedicate that poem to a fellow Italian of mine in Berkeley, Aldo Della Maggiora. That one's for you. From this computer mic to your ears, I'm Dee Allen. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Dee, for sharing. 
It's always good to hear your words on the mic. So next up, we have Kisei Natsuki. Welcome back. Hi, Nia. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for everyone for being here. It's a beautiful community to be a part of. Um, I'm going to read uh, uh, two poems, and um, they both in different ways look at connecting to the body and connecting to our relationships, or my relationship, um, as part of healing. The first is called City of Water. My body arose from the dark earth, black at its soil's heart, deep brown dirt loose to allow surface roots to move and immerse, swimming in a terra ocean, speaking of old glaciers whose mother is water. My body arose feet in ground, with soul dancing a slow dance through its borders, thighs, legs, long outstretched, welcoming the ears cold wrapping around its pores and skin home to touch buttocks twist with each turn of discovery holding thigh and hips reach to waist hip curves belly excited to see the world around my gaze abdomen meets breasts that lead to nipples rest on soft cascade of flesh my arms reach to touch fingers sequence caress lips and brow and thick strands of curly seal brown and sepia. My body rose from dark earth fed by water. Eyes gaze, heart is born as I move through and find hearth within me. Soul recalls home but stays here as I walk on a journey through my skin. Nipples color browns to deep coffee, contracting as clitoris responds to hears cluster of black spiral movement, senses the pits and gaps in stones beneath soles as my legs walk, the brown rock granules whispering on their surface, labial rhythm of weak and strong cycles to cervix voice as breast heave with its movement towards womb my body a mother too. Sacred earth, sacred water, sacred me. I remember home as back sinks into waves, legs singing you in piercing jabs, repeating with my walk, and I feel you beat upon black spirals belly like a drum's goat skin in silence blue midnight as soft curves holding nipples coffee moves. I let you in holding me within this hearth of earth yellow flesh, holding me, holding me. And this is my last one, it's called Home. I tremble, but do not know why, anticipating your leaf chestnut frame coming through that door where I see you. I tremble, but do not know why, as my breath falters, miss steps in rhythm, with my stomach's unsettled growl asking me to breathe across furtive breaths that jump with each faltering like a quiet dun-dun at night to setting sun. My skin shivers to a cool air, not in concert with the soaring heat, home to unseen's kaleidoscope of butterflies in a waterfall of movement below my belly button, my earth's connection to the world by creation, an umbilical cord cut, releasing me to life abundant, full with joy, grief, pain, sorrow, pleasure, gratitude. I tremble in gratitude, stumble in sadness, my heart skipping stones like a child on Chattahoochee's edge, stepping on rocks strewn across the credit river in perfect bridge as salmon loudly rush amid clear current. I quiver, tears meeting face before sudden departure as I pull them back. I'm leaving you, 
I'm leaving this place where I met you again for the first time, where I loved you, mouth, thighs, and skin all over again and all over. As wide as the Chattahoochee, as fast as Mississauga's salmon echoing the pitter-patter of history through my body meeting yours, across Merlot and Magnolias, tumbling in white cotton sheets to orgasm. I shall miss your red stained lips, wine remnant in its crevices, your brown eyes deep like a warm cave I retreat to, finding slumber and solace, your hips and buttocks in rhythmic concordance with long brown body marked with rubbed red umber just for me. I shall miss you. I tremble across marked red river from the great sea, Calente to Mississippi, bondage to freedom in the strength of your arms, pressing on my gold streaked flesh, hiding diamonds and pearls in my womb, volcanic ash settled, layers of shining narca formed to make strong, hold us along the riverside, defying separation, isolation, commodification to love. And we do. Your flesh laid bare on mine, covering the ochre expanse as we moan together in one exhale. Butterfly wings in my stomach like laughter's echo in my womb. We inhale, free at last. I say goodbye. I say hello. Thank you. Wow, wow. Thank you. That was absolutely incredible. And I'm, again, have chills just listening to both your kids, the way that you've written thank you. So thank you. Next up, we have Lorraine Bonner. Welcome, Lorraine. OK, I'm unmuted now. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody for all the wonderful reading and the beautiful words and amazing imagery and and thank you, Nia, for holding this space. Um, at the first time I read here, I mentioned that I was a sculptor and the poems that I read at that time were from um, a series called multi Hued Humanity. I'm working on a new um, series now called Mended, the Mended series. And I'm, uh, the poems that I'm gonna read, I have three short poems, uh, have to do with mending. Uh, the first is called Glue. Epoxies, cements, rubber, and contact, ancient mucilage, and the white minty paste we all ate in kindergarten. So many ways of holding things together, duct tape, clamps. What holds me together? Duct tape of the soul? So many parts of me need crazy glue instant fix, and then another part breaks off. Some people make the seams invisible, as if nothing had happened. I glue with gold, costly. We endured great loss. There is honor in being in need of glue. Where there are scars, there has been great pain, sometimes wisdom, sometimes not. The cost of the glue comes out of my pay. They say, you can't get something for nothing. Too bad there's so much nothing. This is called Mending. This is kind of the statement for the series. Take this torn garment, needle and thread, perhaps a patch matching or contrasting, create a scar, an emblem of injury. The scar, a slightly different color, texture not so wrinkled as skin, not so many nerve endings, a story, history, an echo, evidence of rupture, of the body, of the sense of immortality, evidence of grief and fear, even the scars that can't be seen, especially the scars that can't be seen. We are wounded and hurting more than the pain scale has numbers. We, the whole, the sacred, holy, our planet and all our relations. Mending, we form patterns and networks, quilted symbols of danger and safety. We are surgeons, our sutures are tidy. And when all the wounds are mended, we will all be healed.
This is called code switch. Scars are bilingual. They speak fluent pain, vocabularies of terror and grief, stories of a single moment of inattention or a lifetime of powerlessness. Scar's second language, an algebra of engineering, a bridge that not only joins, but draws together the land on either side, creates a smooth seam out of a raw gash. Scars translate pain into healing, into empathy or hunger for revenge, comradeship born of shared struggle or retreat into bitter solitude. Some forsake their mother tongue and pass for unscarred among the unwounded. Others code switch with ease, dance along the waves of rupture and redemption, letting the light shine out through the poems written in their skin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lorraine, for all three of those pieces, the thoughtfulness, the reflection in them. Absolutely lovely. So to close us out this evening, our final open mic reader will be Avacha. Welcome to the mic, Avacha. I am so honored. I mean, I'm drunk on this poetic beauty. I mean, what can I say? Woo! <laughs> anyway, and I also want to thank uh, T. Watts for mentioning my dear friend, uh, uh, Mississippi Johnny Waters, and the Yoruba saying, as long as you say a person's name, they're alive. And I'm grateful because he was such a special man. Thanks for helping to keep him alive. So in his honor, this is called Too Proud to Sing the Blues. You say you're ashamed of the blues, you got a lot of nerve. Would you throw away your own feet, feet that walked all the way through all this hell so you could lift up your big head and look straight in the eye of freedom? Feet that walk through hell just so you could say, oh, well, now is now, and that was then, and today ain't nothing but a party. Don't need to want no blues or memories of way back then. Days when we didn't even have a pop to piss in or a window to throw it out or much less a guitar to play on. And you got the nerve to be ashamed. Ashamed of what? Ashamed of your own granddaddy. Granddaddy who never did nothing, just picked cotton from KNC to KNC. Pick cotton till his hands would bleed. Pick cotton till he was weak in the knees. Picked all that damn cotton just so you could eat. Folks say, he walked all the way from Mississippi just so we could read. Then you turn around and deny his country behind ever existed and say, you're too proud to sing the blues. And now you say you're too well educated to sing the blues. Too ashamed to admit your grandma couldn't read only good enough to breathe. Wasn't nothing but a roots doctor. Never went to school, never had the time. Just another cotton picker, some kind of juju doctor who talked to the trees, so old time she would sing for rain and knew the name of every root and plant and flower in the state of Arkansas, but she wasn't nobody. Just somebody was strong enough to make you free enough to be fool enough to be nobody. And now, I say, now you have the nerve to say you're too proud to sing the blues, but from where I'm sitting, looks like you haven't paid enough and still don't have a clue. And in spite of all that education, you're still just one more unworthy, ignorant fool, ashamed of all the dues it took to sing the blues. And uh, I want, I'm gonna have to go to this thing here because it's on the way, I haven't had a chance to print it out. This one, um, I've had a lot of folks who tried to pressure me into being a slam uh, poet. And I can't be because I don't believe in the competition and I, that's not what I write for. But, and I respect everybody's right to do what they want to do in the way they want to do it, but I don't respect people trying to press me into doing something I have no intention of doing. So this is called Slam, Be Careful What You Ask For. In these strange, violent, and humane times these days when poetry is just another bad word and a soft, mellow voice is considered a very weak choice, a, a waste of time, a useless and unwanted cop-out, and nobody's listening to a poem anymore. If you, if, if, if you ain't screaming at the top of your lungs, coughing up, uh, 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 spitting and coughing up tone deaf, tone deaf knowledge to the tone deaf and coughing up loud and shocking logic to impress the illogical just to win a few points to prove the pointless in somebody else's game instead of writing scenes do through, live through the eyes of the heart. I choose to see through the wealth of my soul and ride the wind on rich wisdom of Anakaona, Amos Tutwola, Hafiz, Crazy Horse, and Fanny Luhema. 
If I wore my anger loud like a badge, always came to you mad and beat you, beat you senseless with the seriousness of the pain of our undeniably painful truth. Could you hear me any better? I choose instead to caress you with the strength in our truth. I want to seduce you with our power, lovingly pull you inside the gold mine of our minds. And still you demand that I let it all hang out. Say it loud. You better be careful what you ask for, my children. Cause if I ever really screamed, I mean, really, really ever screamed, just even once, castles would crumble, the White House would tumble, the dead would arise with furious tears in their eyes, the devil and his mama would take cover and hide, and all the gods in heaven would break down and cry. So I think you're going to have to accept me as I am. We both know I never cared anything about winning any kind of slam. I'm just a soft spoken poet trying to make love to your mind. Scream. You still think you want me to scream? Be sure you know what you're talking about, because if any of our old folks ever really started screaming, you probably couldn't take it. You just might lose your mind. Anyway, so that's that. <laughs> thank you for listening to my ears. And I want to thank Nia and the Museum of the African Diaspora for all that they do. And hopefully you folks will not only donate money, but put the word out that they need the support because they're going to open back up. If you've never been there, you don't know what you're missing. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. And what you do is like, it's magic, it's medicine. And I want to thank you and everybody from, from Moab for doing what you do, because uh, I don't think we could survive without you. And, and you folks, I put in the thing, our, our poetry series, I'll put it back in again. Please come and visit us and, and keep supporting each other, because it's the only way we're going to get through this madness. Thank you so much, so much, Vacha, both for your words, your poetry, for also shouting out Moab. We truly appreciate you being part of our community. And I want to also thank everyone for being here this evening um, and ec echoing the words of Avacha, as she put it so beautifully. Um, we do appreciate any and all forms of support. If you are able to donate financially, Elizabeth just put information in the chat about donating via phone or also on our website. Um, we also do appreciate your feedback. Um, so we're going to be putting a program survey as well in the chat. So please take a couple of seconds to fill it out. Give us your thoughts about how you enjoyed this, this program so we can best serve our communities in the future. Um, and continue attending our programs. This is only one series of all the programs that MOAD does. So I invite you to check out our website, which is moadsf.org. Um, our next open mic will be on September 10th. So we're hosting them every two weeks. And another plug for Avacha actually on September 24th. So the two open mics from now, she will be our featured poet. So all the more reason to keep coming back and keep supporting us. And with that, thank you everyone for being here and sharing in the space. Um, you're welcome to unmute yourselves as you uh, exit the Zoom room. Um, and I hope you have a good rest of your evening. And I thank really you, Neo. everybody. I thought I saw my old friend uh, Joe San out there somewhere. But anyway, thank he you. He was. He was. Thank uh, you, Nia. Thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, Maliza, I, I looked up the time where you might be. And yes. It, thank you for staying up. I'm, I'm so amazed. And, <laughs> and Sarai, if Sarai's here, I thought, I feel like Sarai's my neighbor. And is, I have no idea Sarai's in Mississippi. This is a wonderful <laughs> evening. Wonderful. Good night. Good night.